So far in the implementation of object oriented programming in C sharp, we have put all the code in a single class. For example, in the previous video of operator overloading, we have defined a class length inside which we have put some number of constructors, the operators and the main method. But if we think logically, main method has nothing to do with the length class. So logically, we need to put that in a separate class. So from now onwards, we will start putting the separate code in the different classes to put the single responsibility on a same class. Now, as soon as we will do that, the accessibility of a particular class member is going to be an issue. And to deal with the same, now we are going to discuss about access modifiers. So here, we have four types of access modifiers, private, internal, public and protected. Let's discuss each individually. First is private. Whenever you define a class member, by default it is private. That means you will not be able to access that particular member which is private from outside the class. Why? That may be you want to keep it safe in the same class. But if you want to access that from outside the class as well, you will have to change the accessibility through an access modifier. For example, you can make it internal. As soon as you will put it internal, that means you are good to access that particular class member from any class within the current assembly or project. For example, you have 10 classes in a single project or in a current assembly and inside that you have created one class having an internal member like internal int a. So this int a can be accessed throughout the assembly. Whenever you define a class or anything inside a namespace that is internal by default. That simply means like this particular class can be accessed within the assembly. Next is public. If you want to access something from your project to some external project, all right? like a library or something else. If you have a requirement like, okay, I have created a particular project, but this particular functionality, I want to access in some other project as well. So in that particular situation, you can make your class and class members as public so that you will be able to access that from external projects as well. We will implement this scenario by the time we will discuss about assemblies. And last is protected. By the time we will start discussing about inheritance, we will get the concept of base class and derived class. If you will define any data member or anything inside a base class with the access specifier protected, that means along with the base class, this member can be accessed within the derived class as well. So we will discuss practically about this protected access modifier by the time we will start working with the inheritance. But in this video, let's see practically how can we implement the private, internal and public. You can see a very simple example right here where I have created a my class one inside which I have just created one data member int a. As you can see, there is no access specifier before this int a. So by default, it is private and similarly, my classes are internal, whether it's my class or program. That means whatever you will create inside a namespace will be internal by default and you cannot make it private, protected or protected internal. As you see, if I'll try to make it private, I will get an error message which will say the same thing like elements defined in namespace cannot be explicitly declared as private, protected or protected internal. So, it can either be internal or public. And here, by default, this A is private. So we will not be able to access this A outside this class, but obviously I can access this one in some other classes. So as you can see right here, I am good to create the instance of this my class. And now if I'll try to access this A, you will not find in this IntelliSense. So if I'll forcefully try to assign anything into it, you will get an error message 
which will say like my class 1.a is inaccessible due to its production level. If I want to access anything from one class to another, at least we'll have to make it internal. So as soon as I will use this internal keyword right here before, it will be accessible here and you see there is no error message now. We will not cover the protected and protected internal accessibility levels in this video because protected will come into the picture when the inheritance will be explained. So by the time I'll explain you inheritance, we will surely get back to this protected concept. Now in order to access this integer a in another class, I can also make it public. What is the difference between public and internal? Like internal will be accessible throughout the current assembly only, but public may be accessible outside this current assembly. So as you see, I have created it public. There is no error here. The program will go as it is. But can I access this A outside this project? The answer is no. Why? Because the class in which it is residing is internal and if you cannot access a class outside this assembly you will not be able to access the class members. So first of all I will have to make a class as a public and now only those members of this class can be accessible outside this assembly who has been marked as public. For example if there are two members right here int a and int b and you see a is public and B is internal. So A can be accessed now in some external assemblies but B will not be able to. But we will cover these concept of assemblies by the time we'll start working with class libraries which we will cover in our coming videos. So this is about the introduction of access specifiers.